Patrick Hicks here with another Craig Tech Tip. Today we're going to be looking at some snow plowing tips and I've got with me a 644K John Deere loader fitted with one of our 301-10 front mount wing assemblies and a 6900 series high curl reversible plow. Now first we're going to be going over some basic terminology of the different components of the wing and plow and then we'll be moving into some uh, plowing procedures. I'm at the rear of the wing here. Now this is what we call our rear lift group or push pole assembly. Now this is what attaches the machine onto the rear of the wing and picks up the wing and folds it up tight to the machine. Now we've got our rear lift cylinder on the bottom which lifts and lowers your, your wing mold board. We've got our plunger assembly here, which is our, our shock absorber for heavy impacts. And then we've got our adjustable brace in the front, which this is meant to be used when the wing mold board is not on the machine. And then we've got our extend cylinder down here, which is what gives you extra reach when plowing and doubles as a hydraulic shock absorber. Now all of this attaches on to the wing mold board itself with a quick attach pin system and has a safety chain to hold on to the rear push pull. So I'm at the front of the wing assembly now. Now here we've got our front post which lifts the front of the wing which will give you your 48 inches of bench height. And the front post lifts with this lift bolt which doubles as your mechanical float which allows the wing to follow the contours of the road with 14 inches of mechanical travel. We've also got our safety chain on here and our main wing bolt, which is a grade two bolt, which is meant to be a shear bolt in the event of a uh, contact of a heavy obstacle. Now I'm at the front of the plow here. This is a 6900 series reversible plow. Now this one's a high curl op option with the, uh, with the high visibility kit on it. This is a trip mold board plow, which allows the plow mold board to trip ahead in the event of uh, hitting an obstacle. Now it's, it's got six trip springs on it, which bring the plow back after, you've, after you, the, uh, the plow has contacted its obstacle. And we've also got two stroke limiters here, which keep the plow from dumping ahead too far. We've also got dual hydraulic cylinders here, um, which are connected onto a cushion valve. Now the cushion valve keeps the, in the event that the leading edge of the plow contacts an obstacle, it allows the plow to relieve itself hydraulically and swing around before damaging any of your other plow components. And we've also got what we call down pressure arms or DPF arms. Now these are slotted arms that allow the plow to follow the contours of the road up and down, but in the event of needing to apply some down pressure onto the onto the edge of the plow, you can also lean, lean the harness ahead and put some pressure on, on the plow to scrape the road better. So now we're going to go over a couple of snow plowing procedures. I'm up in the cab of the machine and we're ready to go plowing. So the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that the front post of your wing assembly is in as close to vertical of a position as you can get it. Now, tilting them ahead or tilting them back a few degrees isn't uh, absolutely necessary, but ensuring that your, your front post is as close to vertical as you can get it will help the front plow operate correctly and the wing assembly to operate correctly. So next, I'm going to want to ensure that my reversible plow is operating level. Now as long as I've got my front post level, I would assume that the way that the down pressure arms are designed, that as long as that front edge of the plow is touching the ground, it should be in a mechanical float, which should let the plow go up and down freely, and side to side to follow the contours of the road. Now when getting ready to plow with the reversible plow, we would strongly recommend, although a plow does angle 30 degrees from side to side, that you do not run it at a 30 degree angle one way or the other. Now if the plow will angle 30 degrees to the right, 
running it at around 15 to 20 degrees will allow you to take advantage of the hydraulic cushion valve found on the front of the reversible plow. Now in the event that you hit a heavy obstacle this will allow the cylinders to go over hydraulic relief and relieve pressure to the other side of the cylinder rather than pushing the plow mechanically into the frozen obstacle. This will save you time and money on parts when you're not having to repair broken components on your reversible plow after every plowing. So after I've got my reversible plow set where it's going to be contacting the ground level and that it's not angled all the way to the right or the left, I can then start focusing on my wing. What you'll want to do is ensure that when you lower your wing, you're going to want to lower it so that the rear of the wing contacts the ground before the front. Now the reason for this is so that the front edge of the wing does not gouge into the asphalt ground. So I'll lower my rear of the wing first and then the front of the wing. After I've ensured that I'm going to lower my wing in the correct position and that I've got my plow harness and reversible plow sitting correctly, the next thing we'll look at is ensuring that the wing is run with the extend function out. Now doing this you'll pull the trigger and press the left slider out. This will ensure that you've got your extra reach of the slide or the rear extend which will allow you to cover more road surface and the extend cylinder also doubles as a hydraulic shock absorber. The pressure holding it out there is substantially less than the full system pressure of the machine. So it is intended to give way when hitting an obstacle. So, now that I've got my wing all the way extended and my harness in the correct position and I'm ready to plow with the wing on the ground, I want to hit the float button, which is on the left hand side. After that you'll notice that a red light should come on your joystick. Now this ensures that the rear lift is now exposed to hydraulic float, which will let it follow the contours of the road up and down. Now because there's no float on the front of the wing, you'll want to lower the front post completely which will allow the front of the wing to float mechanically on the lift bolt. Now when preparing to bench with one of these machines or shelve, which is the operation of running your wing at a specified height off the ground to push back frozen snow banks, I'll want to be running it with the extend all the way out, which is an important hydraulic shock absorber for the wing assembly in this position you won't want to use your rear float button. Having the wing set at one or two feet off the ground and benching with the float button on will cause the rear of the wing to dig into the snowbank and dig into the ground. Now the front of the wing is held up mechanically and it isn't really of any concern when benching. So as long as you're running the rear of the wing not in float and have the extend cylinder all the way out between the extend hydraulic shock absorber and the mechanical spring on the rear push pull, that should cover the wing for any contact of heavy obstacles frozen in your snow bank. So by following these recommendations, you can ensure that you're operating your Craig plow gear the way that we've designed it to be operated and should lead you to optimal plowing results and minimal downtime.